everybody. It's Kara Shaw with Hen and Chick Cakes. Um, I show you my wafer paper mache technique that I use to make these Halloween toppers. And um, we will be stopping uh, and breaking questions a little bit. Icing Images social media rep here with us today, and she's going to uh, help collect your questions. Uh, please type them in all caps, if you would, so she can, to alert her to what is a question and what is a comment. And um, we're going to go ahead and get, get started. So uh, to make these, all I used really is wafer paper. It's Icing Images uh, flavored premium wafer paper. And um, you can get that at icingimages.com. I know that uh, they're going to put the website up above me, right? <laughs> and... Um, in lots of colors. It does not come in orange. I painted this, but we'll talk about that. Um, this green color, though, is they're green, and I love it for this creepy, spooky hand. Um, so the jack-o'-lantern is the first thing we're going to make. Um, I have a battery-operated tea light inside. I don't know if you can really tell because the light in and lights up. So when it's dark, um, you'll be able to see. You know, if you, if you make one, and you put it in the dark, you'll be able to see that it lights up. You can also do that with this. You can put the little tea light and light up, light up the hand. Another idea I have is to, to put, you know, candy Lights inside the hand. So if you've got a cake with hands all around it, and um, each kid could get a hand then to take home with candy. If you're having a little Halloween party, um, you would just have to close up the bottom with more more paper after you after you fill it. Um, so uh, all of these are edible. But I, to be honest, I wouldn't take a bite. Um, you can lick it. It tastes like vanilla. The icing images wafer paper does taste really good. Um, it's just really crunchy and not exactly a pleasing thing to bite into. But it is cool looking and it doesn't ruin your cake because it's made out of edible um, material. So if you've done regular paper mache before um, with paper and glue and all that. Um, this is a lot easier. Um, it's a similar technique, but it's a lot easier and it dries a lot faster, which is awesome. Um, because especially, um, it, you know, in our world, if you're selling cakes, time is money and you're going to be, you know, working, making these, you want them to get ready fast and be finished fast. Um, tip number one, never throw away your scraps ever. Paper mache with wafer paper is a great way to use up all those scraps when you're cutting your flowers, cutting your petals, cutting circles out of wafer paper, you're often left with a, just a pile of wafer paper that's thin and you don't know what to do with it. I just keep it all, I sort it by my color. I've got my green, I've got my yellow. Keep it in a bag and use it next time you have something that you want to create into a paper mache sculpture. Um, one way, uh, so let's talk about color just real quick before we get started. Uh, Icing Images has, I think it's six colors uh, that it comes in, five or six, um, and they're great. They're nice and even. Um, I really, I really love this, this green. It's good for leaves as well when you're making, um, when you're trying to work quickly, make flowers. The orange, the pumpkin, I did it in white, and then um, I, I used my airbrush to airbrush it. It works great. I don't need it to be a perfectly even color for this project. Um, but if you have a project where you want a perfectly even color and you can't buy it because it's not one of the colors on Icing Images, um, you can use your edible printer uh, to do that. And Icing Images has edible printers. They even have a new um, product. It's a printer head cleaner. It's called the Canon, I wrote it down, the Canon Print Head Cleaning System. And um, I've heard that it's really great. Uh, I don't have a Canon at the moment, or I don't have an edible printer that I'm using at the moment, but I would like to clean the one that I have um, that I'm not using and see how it works. Um, Icing Images also has a contest going on uh, where if you order edible ink, uh, randomly there will be a golden ticket inside one of the packages, and it's worth uh, it's a $25 gift certificate for off of your next order. Um, so again, three ways to get color, print it, airbrush it, or just buy the colors that they have. Um, so let's get started with our jack-o'-lantern. 
if you've done any paper mache before, which I think probably most of us, at least in elementary art class, did a little bit of paper mache at some point, it's the basic technique of using a balloon. So you blow up your balloon to the size that you want your jack-o'-lantern to be. And I've got my wafer paper scraps here. And, and, and bottle, this is not paper potion, this is water. I will use paper potion in a little bit and I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. This is just water, I, I reused my bottle because I run out of paper potion really quickly. <laughs> um, so you just do one little squirt and lay it on your balloon. And um, I am spritzing the water onto the smooth side of the wafer paper because the other side is a little, has a little more grip to it. And it's, I don't, it's less likely to, the smooth side is less likely to stick to the balloon um, forever. Although I don't think that would happen. I just feel like the smooth side is better on the inside for this project. Usually I do it the other way around. So as you can see, I'm just covering it up. And I really, what I'm doing is I'm going to do one whole layer and then I'm going to go back later and I'm going to put another whole layer. I want it to dry a little bit in between, but I want to put two layers of paper on, on there. And an exact thing, some of these are going to have lots of different uh, layers. You know, some parts of it are just going to have lots of different layers. Um, but my goal is to get it so that I don't have anything that's just one piece of paper because that's a really thin spot and it might break more easily when you pop your balloon. So I'm not going to bore you by sitting here and just covering the whole balloon right now in front of you. Uh, I just kind of wanted you to get the idea. Um, when I do finish this one, I'll be baking it to here so that I can leave a hole right here and when it's dry, and this is the key, when it's fully dry, then I will pop my balloon very slowly and pull it out. And I do have one ready uh, like that to show you. I made this one a little bigger. This one has been drying um, two hours at least is what I would say. I did, uh, when I got excited, when I thought of this technique and I would pop my balloon too early and then it would cave in on itself because I was just too excited to see how it was to go turn out so <laughs> I lost my train of thought I'm sorry so um, anyway wait till it dries fully uh, I'm just going to get a pin and give it a little pin prick and let the air out really slowly hopefully slowly hopefully we won't have a big Maybe we will. It'll be exciting. Okay. So I just have a little pin prick hole. And it's sticking. You see how it's sticking at the top? Um, it's going to release. I just want to do it slowly so that it doesn't tear the whole thing. Just sort of get your finger under there and release it. You can push the balloon a little bit, get the air to come out, and there, it released. Now, I intentionally went a little bit farther than I want to so that I can trim the top when I'm all done. I made it a little bit higher up the balloon than I want it to end with. So I'm just going to cut that part off. You can always add more later, but it's much easier to just take a little bit away. And you can see as the balloon is going out, it's sticking. You can kind of hear it. I'm going to show you how to fix that. I did not do that on purpose, but that's kind of fortuitous. All right. Got the balloon, and there you have it. So. I do have this little crack. Now I would, I want to trim this part anyway. Um, so I'm going to trim it and then I'm going to patch the crack to show you how to do that because I did crack it just because I was getting in there a little too aggressively. 
Um, it could have been it could have been better and just waited for it to uh, let out more slowly. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut that top off just because for this one I want a nice clean cut at the top and a little more pumpkin-y shape. Okay. And so I've got this crack right here, just like you would do with regular paper mache. You just want to patch the crack with some more material. So just water and wafer paper. I'm going to patch it on the inside too to give it a little strength. And I would even probably put a couple more layers on there as well. So the other part I wanted to show you is that my, my balloon had a little bit of a point to it. I don't know if you can really see, see how it's not perfectly round. This is not going to stand up, but I want it to. I want it to stand up like this one does. So now I'm going to put my water away and get out my fancy paper potion. And what paper potion does, water makes it stick. Paper potion softens it and makes it more pliable. So this is really hard now that it's dried. I'm gonna spray it on just the part that I want to manipulate and just sort of work it in for a few seconds. Rub it into that area. And then I don't wanna put But once you, once you do it, see how it, you can sort of manipulate the shape? Oop, it cracked a little bit, but that's okay. I can patch that. The idea is not to make a big hole and have to start all over. So I'm making the bottom that I want, and I'm going to go ahead and be okay with the little hole that I have because I'm going to patch it. But I just want to have a flat bottom so that this round object can sit upright, and it does. So I'll go back later and patch that. I don't even need to, but I could. Um, and that's the pumpkin. Now to color it, what I did with this one is I just got my orange airbrush color and I airbrushed it. But um, I should have said this before. You don't airbrush it un after you've taken it out because if you, every time you get it moist, it's going to get wet and mushy and start to Color it, keep the balloon in, color it, let it dry again a second time, completely dry, and then take it out. So that's how I did this one. The balloon was still in there when I colored it. Um, I just didn't, we wouldn't have time to sit and wait for it to dry today for you. I do want to show you how easy this is to carve. Now, I could go ahead and get my edible markers and draw a face like I did with this one, um, or... I have this one little guy up here that I that I carved and I do use a pen blade for that they're super sharp and accurate uh, if you don't have any pen blades I we actually sell them on icyimages.com oh there we go <laughs> pen blades sell them on icyimages.com and we do have a question um, Kara yes ma'am all right, so Christy would like to know, can you put shortening on the balloon, or is that not a good idea? Um, you could. Actually, I was thinking of, of trying it. I didn't try it. I would love to know how it worked out, though, if you want to try it. Um, I do think that because it doesn't – if you use the – it's fully dry, it's really not going to stick forever. I don't think that shortening is necessary, but I think you probably could do it. Um, so I'm just going to carve a little face in here to show you how easy it is to carve with the pen blade. on cakes you can just make lanterns to put all around your kitchen for Halloween if you want um, it remains just 
just soft enough that you can that you can carve it really easily. You don't want to squish down too much that you need to watch out for. Um, and I could clean up that shape later, but there's a carved pumpkin. Uh, so the next one, uh, do we have any more questions, Cassie, before I? Uh, that looks good so, uh, so far. <laughs> um, All right, so to, um, moving on. To we did want to say, though, I don't know if you touched on it, um, that you can get the colored wafer paper. Um, you can start with the colored wafer paper, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, that's what I do um, with this one. I use the color wafer paper to start. And that, it, it, even if you print it beforehand, um, however you do it, you can, um, you can do it. Now, I would say, though, that the water would probably get, turn it splotchy a little bit. You might get a little less of an even, um, you know, tone on the ones that you, once you're adding water to the ink, I think that might make it a little, a little splotchy. All right, and Lisa has um, a question um, that I can answer while you go. She says, is there any orange colored wafer paper? So currently, Icing Images sells the colors that are on the screen. Um, they do not have orange. But question is, could you airbrush it? Absolutely. Um, you can airbrush it ahead of time. But again, when you add the water, when you spray the water, um, it will get a little splotchy. You can airbrush it after it dries the first time um, while the balloon is still inside. I would not recommend airbrushing it after that because it's probably going to cave in on it. Moisture is going to make wafer paper wet and soggy, and you don't want that. Um, so the green uh, wafer paper that is easy to get at the icingimages.com. Um, something that most of us bakers, hopefully all of us bakers have in our kitchen are gloves and, um, these handy dandy little gloves can be balloons as well. So, uh, you just blow up your, blow up your glove and they're not as easy to tie as a balloon. Um, I do have a lot of practice doing it because I have a kid who's been in the hospital a lot. So one way that I've entertained him is to grab a blue glove off the wall and, blow it up and play volleyball with them in the room. But um, if you can't tie it, you can always just get a, um, just get a rubber band. Well, I already have one done. Just get a rubber band and seal the end like that. Um, and you do it, it's the same technique as the other. It's just a little tricky because you have to get around the fingers. You wanna make sure the fingers don't stick together. So one thing I do with the hand is put it in a little bowl and I'm going to, um, again, use the water, smooth side down. You want the paper to stick to itself. So just layer it on top of each other. And then what I'll do with the hand um, so that I don't get too much on one side is flip it over and start on the other side a little bit. And then I'm going to do the fingers last. They're going to meet in the middle. You know, I'm going to meet in the middle with the at the end. So just to show you. Just gonna wrap it around the finger. And I'm gonna wait before I do this finger because if this is wet and this is wet and they touch each other, they're gonna stick together and it's gonna be, you're gonna kinda have to pry them apart and start over. Um, but that's the general idea. And then at the end, you do the same thing. Pop the balloon really slowly and um, pull it out. Make sure that you have it all intact because you don't want any pieces of glove or balloon in your edible topper, that would be bad. You probably want to be aware of what latex allergies as well. If you have, if you're using latex balloons, um, and they're for a kids' party, you want to be aware of that. And we also just wanted to let you guys know that if you don't see a color here, you can always print the color orange because a lot of people are having questions about like you know other colors and stuff like that. 
so you can definitely print it. How um, we have a question? Uh, how did you print? How did you get yours so orange? Um, this is two layers of airbrush color. The balloon was still in there. I did one thin layer of airbrush color. Let it dry. Did another one. Let it dry, and then pop the balloon. Um, I can't say that enough. <laughs> Definitely let it dry all the way or you, you're going to have it cave in. And I forgot to mention that I also put the um, handle. The handle is, of course, if you make uh, gum paste flowers or any, actually lots of wafer paper flowers, you probably have floral wire sitting around. So um, it's non-toxic. You just bend it and it's really easy to poke through the sides of the wafer paper. Um, Jack the lantern. I'm, I'm just, I poked a hole and I just bent it back up. And Kara, when you're airbrushing, I know a lot of people, they kind of freak out because airbrush is usually water based. Um, yeah. Do you have any suggestions for coloring the wafer paper so that way you don't, you know, it doesn't, uh, so people kind of aren't so scared about airbrushing wafer paper. Gotcha. Um, I actually make my own airbrush colors with um, the gel colors and vodka. You just put a tiny little bit of the color, a lot of vodka to make it really thin. Just make, if you know that you have to know the consistency of airbrush color first. And once you do, you can make, make your own. And if it's on the balloon, it's not going to, it'll dry just in that shape, you know. Um, if you're airbrushing a flat piece of wafer paper ahead of time, I do it little by little in thin layers. I just do a thin layer, dry, come back, thin layer, dry, I come back. I mean, vodka is so texture of the wafer paper too, but it evaporates much more quickly than water. So it's not going to turn it to mush quite as much. Now, if you're just going crazy and spraying a lot, it's, you're going to end up with a pile of potato starch mush because that's what, you know, that's what it is. Um, let's see. Oh, another thing I do, sometimes I paint by hand. So if you wanted to add like, I don't know, creepy veins to your hand or nails, or like if you're doing a zombie hand and you want to add like, you know, blood and gore and scars and stuff. Um, uh, one way that I like to do, uh, pa painting by hand is I pour a little bit of paper potion into a little jar. And I use that with petal dust, and it really works well to paint uh, the, paper, the wafer paper because it's so kind to the wafer paper. It softens it. It doesn't ruin it, you know. Again, if you're going to pour a ton of it on there, then, yeah, you might get a mushy spot. But if you're just painting with a little brush with petal dust and potion, it's great. It works great painting on the, on the wafer with that. That's a great tip. Uh, so we're not limited to just balloons. Um, now I'm starting to look all around everywhere I go and think, what can I make out of wafer paper? What can I cast out of the paper, this paper mache now that I've done this? Um, I saw this at the craft store and I thought, oh, that would make a great Halloween face. So this is styrofoam. So the one main tip is to cover it with cling wrap first. You want to cover it with your plastic wrap. Push the plastic wrap as close to all the little lines as possible. That way your wafer, when you wet it, um, doesn't stick to styrofoam. It would totally cling to the styrofoam without that layer in between. Um, so I just did this uh, last night. I laid the cling wrap on there um, and I piece by piece let this, you know, covered the face, let it dry. And I mean, I could have even gone... I could have gone halfway. You just need to be able to pull it out because, of course, it's not a balloon. You can't pop it. So you need to be able to pull it out. Um, I just released the cling wrap and pulled it off, and it didn't stick to the cling wrap. And now I've got a face. And I just love it because you, I, can, I can just picture, like, a Halloween cake with on the front. You can even light it from the inside just, like, you know, even even on, on your cake, you just warn your uh, customer that there's a light, you know, get the light out before you eat it. But I could just see a glowing face on the front of a cake or even on top of a cake. Um, 
you could cut it and turn it into a mask. You could add flowers and turn it into a sugar skull. You could just, I mean, there's just so many things that I feel like, you know, you could do to make this uh, something interesting. So I'm excited about this. I'm going to start casting, you know, just about everything I can find, um, covering it with saran wrap, cast it, cast the wafer paper and see what I can make. So um, I just, I love it because it's quick and it's easy. Um, it doesn't require a whole lot of sculpting skill. Well, it doesn't really require any sculpting skill to do this. You just, you know, get the shape of the object that you're, that you're sculpting. Um, speaking of sculpting, another little paper mache project, and I'm just going to get closer here. Um, I made these little gourds and pumpkin, a little apple. Um, this is, paper, I'm sorry, wafer paper plus paper potion to sculpt. So um, I'm just going to give you a quick little. We have a question. Uh, sure. Yeah. Deborah would like to know, can you add deco gel to make a gooey, ooey eye effect on like the masquerade mask? I mean, that's an amazing idea. I've never tried that. And yes, Deborah, I would try that because I think that would be awesome. And also, just to let you know, uh, we're going to go ahead and put up a special coupon code that is just for the first 10 people, and we're going to go ahead and put it up now, so you, when you guys are ready, go ahead and take the screenshot, and then you guys can head on over to the website, because this is a really good coupon. All right, it's up. Awesome. So, the first 10 people to order using the cold PP sample... Um, expires 916 end of the day they can order anything and use the code to get a free sample bottle of paper potion awesome. um, I go through paper potion so fast I'm on my third bottle <laughs> right um, in the last and that's in the last you know two months um so what I'm doing with this is this is why I go through paper potion so fast I'm just taking my scraps spraying it and starting to sculpt it kind of gets a little soft starting to sculpt it's sort of falling apart a little bit too but if you spray it it'll stick to itself i wouldn't use water for this because water is going to make it dissolve really quickly paper potion gives you a little bit of time um So as you can see, I'm starting to get a little shape of a pumpkin. You just keep going, you keep adding layers. And it takes a little while because you've gotta just keep making it bigger and bigger. But if you just want little, cute little toppers, um, this is sort of an easy way to, to do that. Now again, I wouldn't want to bite into one of these. These are, um, they're pretty hard. And I, if you put these on a cupcake, a little kid might want to eat it. I wouldn't put them on a cupcake unless you're really watching the kids. I'd put them on top of a cake, maybe in a cornucopia, you know, if you're getting ready for um, planning your Thanksgiving cakes. Um, it, it would be a really cool way to fill a cornucopia full of, you know, tiny little, tiny little vegetables. That would so, be cute. We also have another question when you're ready. Sure. Um, Deborah would like to know, do you think you can use black licorice when making the handle on the pumpkin so it's all edible? Oh, yeah. I, I, you know what? That's another great idea. Um, I would, you would just use something like a skewer to puncture, you know, the, the hole first, and then you could feed the black licorice through there as long as it's, you know, big enough to, as long as your skewer is big enough. To make a big enough hole or you even use a paper punch use a hole punch um, if you just use it just for wafer paper and actually you could use hole punches um, you know for a little one anyway you could use a hole punch that has different shapes to make your face it'd be hard to get down here but at least to make your eyes and we just wanted to say thank you we've gotten some really good shares on this broadcast and also wanted to send a big thank you for Kara to take the time out of her day to show us this. It's a really cool technique. And when she brought it to Icing Images, we were super, super stoked to see all the fun stuff that she's coming up with.
So I'm really excited that she's agreed to do this live with us. <laughs> Thank you. It's fun for me. And um, it just it just got me so excited about now. Like I said, now I'm seeing things everywhere. Actually, I, I have to show you my next project. I'm going to do this on my YouTube channel, but um, at uh, Joann's or Michael's or something. It's just a Halloween decoration. I got it for $2. Um, it's paper, so I'm going to have to cover it with plastic wrap so that the wafer doesn't stick, but I'm totally going to make a sugar skull. Um, same technique, cover it up, cut out, you know, whatever parts are, are left, and there it will be. I love that. That is super cool. And yeah. you guys uh, didn't notice, we have Kara's information to her YouTube and her Facebook, so if you guys can go show her some love and support for taking you know, the time out of her day to show us this stuff. We're really, really appreciative of it. So if you guys can show her that appreciation, we would greatly appreciate it. A lot of appreciation yeah, going you. around. <laughs> and if you uh, end up using this technique and you post a photo of it, please tag me. I would really, really love to see what everybody um, decides to make. Because, I mean, the sky's the limit. If you can find different shapes of balloons, it could be really fun decide to sculpt things. Oh, I, that reminds me. Um, the hand, when you first pop it, you have, you just have a straight balloony hand. So I, to do this, I used the paper potion like I did with the bottom of this when I put the paper potion on, rubbed it in to the bottom, sort of soften up the area you want to manipulate. And that's how I bent the thumb and bent the fingers different ways to sort of look more like a creepy hand than just a balloony hand. You know what I'd like to know? I would like to know what um, the people in the comments, what, what they're going to do, like what they're going to make with this technique. I'd like to hear their ideas. Me too. And uh, when you guys do share it, make sure you guys tag Icing Images because I know Kara will be sharing all the stuff that people are using with this technique, and we would love to share it as well. So make sure you guys use that hashtag. So we uh, one, one, other, one other thought that I had, um, I, used, um, I used strips of paper to do this instead of just um, scraps. And one easy way to get strips is to run it through your pasta machine and through the, you know, like the fettuccine maker and your pasta machine. If you have one and it'll cut your wafer paper into perfectly thin strips, you can make a great mummy face that if you wanted to just make this into a mummy and make it look like it was, you know, the paper wound around a mummy or the fabric, I mean. That'd be a good idea. And uh, Denise asked, which paper are you using? Uh, I'm using the premium flavored wafer paper paper from icing images uh that's what i have the white and then i also um did the green hand with their green um it comes in red blue yellow uh what else pink comes in pink it's blue red green pink yellow purple it's actually on the screen right now perfect awesome so those are, you know, that's that's what I used for this. And like I said, it does taste good if you lick it vanilla, but um, I wouldn't chew on it. <laughs> once you once you wet it and it hardens, like if wafer paper is easy to eat when it's just flat and new, but once you wet it and it hardens, it it changes the texture permanently. It makes it really, really hard. So it's just not not good to chew on, but. But very cool looking. So that's it for that's it for my tutorial today. But um, thank you so much for joining us. I'm um, really excited to see what projects you make, uh, whether it's Halloween or anything else. Uh, another idea that I had the other day was to do like a little strawberry, um, kind of put candy inside and make you know make the top come off and. That would be a cute on top of a cake. It doesn't have to be Halloween theme. It could be anything. Uh, but the balloon that I was working on was sort of strawberry shaped. So it gave me inspiration there. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. I'm just double checking to make sure we don't have any other questions. 
Vanessa did have a good suggestion for putting the licorice. She said maybe attach it with some chocolate. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah melt a little chocolate and just dab it on the sides and then, yeah. And if you make them small enough, these would be so cute on top of little clown cakes. Um, you know, if you make small little, if you find little balloons, make a little jack-o'-lantern for each kid. That would be super cute. So Christy said, have you tried to attach the dry piece to a cake yet? Um, yes, actually. If you, um, and now, if I were to attach this to a cake, uh, I would want to leave a little room so that I could fold it flat, um, have a little flat uh, edge. And if you have a fondant-covered cake and you make this a little bit wet with water around the edges, if you attach it, the wafer paper is going to stick to your fondant with just that little bit of water. All right. Well, I think that's all the questions. Yeah, and this is so light. Oh, I was just going to say, this is so lightweight that it's not going to fall forward very easily. I mean, this is like, it's paper, so it's not heavy. This is lightweight. It's not going to cave in. You know, it's it's a lot um, lighter than putting in the well, and I think a lot of I think a lot of people too kind of get hesitant when they want to put something like that, like on a buttercream cake. So I know for myself, I put wafer paper decorations on, you know, buttercream cakes. You just want to make sure that it's um, a crusted buttercream, so that way, um, you know, it, the oil's not leaking into the wafer paper. So I've done that where I've let a cake kind of crust over and have stand like I've stood up like characters next to the cake or leaning on the cake or what have you and it mm -hmm. works just fine so you know you can you can even do it probably on a buttercream cake but that's where you guys come into play because this is where you take this amazing idea that Kara came up with and you run with it and you go make amazing things and you share it and you use the hashtag I seen images and then we get to all see how how many other ways you can make amazing things with this technique. So I'm super excited to see what you're going to create. We know Kara is. And we're going to go ahead and wrap everything up. If you have anything to say, <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. All right. So okay. hopefully, hopefully you guys have liked this new setup. Uh, thank you, Kara, for you know working with us as we kind of try this new setup. I, we know it's a little bit different, but we're trying to up our game in the – in the you know Facebook live world um, so thank you guys so much also we just wanted to let you know um, we were just told from the amazing owner of icing images she said you can paint deco gel on it before attaching it to buttercream the deco gel will act like a barrier oh that's that's a <laughs> good tip thank you that was a good tip a little last minute good tip so all right, guys. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and uh, share this broadcast and grab that coupon code while it lasts. It's only good for the first 10 people. All right, guys. We'll see you. Bye.